What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Melissa Hager TV. So glad to have you here today. I hope you are doing well. I am here in studio. This is where our podcast, Ladies of the Comedy Series, is typically recorded. So um, if you see a familiar background or you're somebody that listens to that show regularly, that is where I'm at. I'm in our studio. You know, I pop up all over the place. So who knows where I'll be? Um, I've been doing comedy the last five years, four years. Hmm. I think four years. I've been doing stand-up comedy. I don't know. It flies by really fast. <laughs> It's been a blast. I've had so much fun hearing all the laughter and everyone having a great time. And, um, you know, it's just about that time to start diving into a little bit more personal stuff and uh, let you guys get to know me a little bit better and see what the heck is this girl all about. So today, I wanted to talk to you about something cool, something kind of personal, something that I think a lot of you can relate to. Um, I have been overweight my entire life. I have not had a skinny moment. I've had a lot of yo-yos, lots of ups and downs, but never like even average. I've never got to be the person that just blends in. That's never, ever, ever been the case for me. So um, I was born a big baby. I was born uh, a month overdue. My mom makes sure to let me know about that. Imagine how long you're pregnant already and then that you have to carry a child for a whole nother month. Oh my goodness. That doesn't sound fun at all. Uh, yeah, so I was a month overdue. I was already big when I was born, and um, it just kind of went from there. I grew up on a farm. We ate a lot of food that we grew, uh, whether it be the vegetables or the meat that we were eating. Uh, but there was a lot of butter. There was a lot of sour cream. There was a lot of salt. There was a lot of flavoring. Um, and my mom was an amazing cook. Um, my my house was full of great food. And it just, it wasn't anything like bad. It just was a lot. And I started at a very young age. There was a habit of cleaning your plate. You know, the, the old thinking, the old theory of, hey, you got to eat what you take. That's, that's a real life thing. That's something that parents do. And I've even been guilty of doing that with my kids. Well, when you're sitting at the table with your brother and your sister, who are skinny as rails, by the way, I was the only big one. My brother and sister were tiny. Um, and you couldn't leave the kitchen table until everyone cleaned their plate. Well, they're full. I'm full. But you want to leave. So it's like, here, give me your stuff. I'll eat it. And that became a habit for me early on. And uh, again, it's hard to waste when you live on a farm because that's pounded in your head. So it's it's a it's a thing. It's it's just a, it's a thing. These habits, you do them long enough over time, and they become bigger problems. Not consciously, not because you're trying to be the biggest person in the room. It just that just happens. So. My mom did a great job of keeping my confidence very high. I had no idea I was overweight. I really didn't. I went to a small private school for until eighth grade, and I played all the sports and, and started on the basketball team and the volleyball team, and I never, ever, ever was self-conscious about what I looked like. I always was confident, and... Um, when I got to high school, I went to the public school, and then that changed a little bit. You know, them kids are a little bit more real, a little more honest. Uh, kind of hurts a little bit, but that's where I f finally discovered that I was a little bit bigger than everybody else. Um, I was the biggest girl in the class, and I, I'm, I'm, I've tried to think of this through my mind. I think I was the biggest kid in my class. I don't know of anyone that was bigger than me. Um... There was some strong contenders, but I was definitely the biggest kid in my class. But again, I still played sports. I was the starter on the basketball team and the volleyball team. And I have, um, uh, I was going to states for shot put and discus. I, I did a lot of physical activity. So again, I would sell myself out of the fact that, you know, like I'm big boned. That's kind of a thing. You know, you get the whole big boned thing that happens to a lot of us. 
that we convince ourselves that we have this big structure, bigger than everybody else's, even though our foot size, like it's weird, our shoe size is still uh, average or small. And hands, like I don't have big hands. Um, but uh, it just is what it is. Got through high school, moved on, uh, became a salesperson <laughs> right away. I sold indoor air filtration systems, really great time. Ended up that's a whole story for a whole nother day, a whole nother video. Ended up marrying the owner of that company. He was much, much older than me, uh, but he had a prized young wife now, and I knew I wasn't where I should be. So the eating got worse. I remember um, staying home from work. You know, it was our business, and I'd be like, oh, I don't feel good today. I'm going to stay home. And I would eat, like, an entire bag of egg noodles. I would boil them up and make them, and then I would put garlic salt and butter and cheese and just that. I would just eat them and just go to sleep and just try to sleep my life away. Um, you know, and there's there's a lot of more stories like that I'm sure that we can get into again at another time. But I had now been put into a position where we had money. There was, you know, not health insurance, but money. And I was like, listen, I already then started looking into weight loss surgery and what was all involved. Now, this is, um, let's see, that'd be like 15 years ago. So this is at a time when they didn't have so many options. It was basically the gastric bypass where they reroute the, you know, they take and take off the bottom of your stomach and they make a small pouch and then they reroute, you know, your large intestine or your small intestine up. I don't know. Anyways, that was the only option. And um, I didn't have insurance, so it was very, very expensive. And so I had found a place online where you could sign up and you could go overseas and do it for like $5,000. And I was like, this is it. This is it. And I have had the same family doctor my entire life. I told her what I was going to do and she flipped. She was like, absolutely not. Then she sent me all kinds of horror stories that like the beds in their hospitals are actually padded with straw and just all kinds of stuff. It, it Very barbaric back then. I'm sure all that stuff has come a long way. But the point of the matter is, this has been on my mind for a very, very, very long time. So then I found myself feeling um, defeated, you know, like, son of a gun. Like, oh, I was this close, this close. And it was just depressing. And it was like, I, you know, this is the cards I've been dealt. And that was my only option. And so now what? Just be fat and miserable. You know, I, when I was married uh, to him, we, we were together four years total. And I think the heaviest that I was, was about 326 pounds. And I remember getting pictures back from a trip. We had went on a cruise and one of the stops we had gotten off the boat and we had gotten like couple pictures together with some other friends that were on the trip. And like, I remember when I got the pictures back, I was just like, ugh, this is so depressing. I d that's not me. That is not me. Like, 200, 225, 230 to 326 pounds, that is such a big difference. It's such a big difference on what your eyeballs see in yourself when you're looking at a picture of it. So uh, we ended up splitting up. He got himself a girlfriend. <laughs> We ended up splitting up, and I naturally kind of went through the divorce diet a little bit of, like, that sadness for the life change, but also, like, woohoo, that re-excitement, and I'm going to take better care of myself. Well, it, I started walking. My mom lived on, uh, I moved back in, I moved in with my mom, and she lived on a really nice little street in my hometown, and it was great for walking. And she would come home from work, and I was doing real estate at the time. I would come home from showing houses, and we would walk. We would walk. We got up to like three miles. We would walk almost every single weekday. 
And I started noticing differences. Like I started noticing some definement in some muscles. I started noticing like a stronger core. And I started noticing an energy that I hadn't had for a long time. And my weight was dropping. And then somebody presented to me the idea of doing The Biggest Loser. It was a mid-Michigan-wide contest, and it was going to air on the local news after the actual national show played. Then Michigan was going to do their own version of it, and it was going to play on the news. But you had to do it with a family member. It wasn't going to be an individual one. Uh, So I called up my aunt, my Aunt Cheryl. She's amazing. Uh, Everybody always thinks we're sisters. We look so much alike. And she's not even blood. Like, she married my uncle, who is my dad's brother. And it's crazy how much we look alike. It's just wild. She's amazing. And uh, I know she's also competitive and fun. So I thought, this is the perfect partner for me. So we joined The Biggest Loser, mid-Michigan, and we actually ended up winning. And it was really cool. We got a whole bunch of cool stuff. We made a whole bunch of new friends. It was amazing. Amazing. We won. Um, And so at the height of that, that was in 2008. At the height of all that excitement, my lowest I got down to was... Um, 235 pounds. That was my last and final weigh-in. Yes, I won the Biggest Loser Contest weighing 235 pounds. You know, like you would think it would have went lower than that. I don't know. But we were working out so much. Like winning that contest, my whole attitude had so much more to do with winning that contest than it did with am I getting healthy. So we were working out four or five, six hours a day and You know, that's just not something you can maintain for longer than a two-month contest because it's just not feasible to be able to go to work and to earn money and to take care of a family and dating and all that stuff. It's just not, that's not going to happen. So um, I had gotten a membership at a gym nearby where I lived. They were awesome. They worked well with me. They taught me some new things. I got back into lifting again. I was really enjoying that and just... I had not changed a lot of my eating habits. I had started working out and I built some muscle, but I had not uh, changed a whole lot of like this up here because this, this is the problem. And um, it just started creeping back onto me. I met a man, uh, let's see, 2010. I was out with my sister. We were watching a band and there was this pretty handsome Fella sitting across the way, uh, he was on his phone, his track phone, <laughs> looking like he was busy, but he had challenged at my sister's boyfriend at the time to a game of pool, and whoever lost had to buy the whole group a round of shots. Now, his version of the story will be that he lost on purpose because he wanted to meet me because me and my sister just had stayed over the table. We didn't talk to them, um, and that's really sweet. I love that part. Um, I think he probably just lost and doesn't want to admit it, but whatever. (laughs) To each his own, right? (laughs) So anyways, um, we met that night. We talked the night away. We went on a date a few days later, and the rest is history. We ended up getting married, and when we had met, I had, uh, my weight had went back up to about two, I think I was about 270, about right in there when we met, and uh, and he was actually about 400 pounds. I did not know that. I did not recognize. I did not recognize that in him. Um, I mean, I knew he was a bigger guy, but he's tall and he drove a pickup. You know, everybody looks skinnier in a pickup. <laughs> That's a thing. So um, we got married um, about a year and a half later, and when we got married, he had lo- we. I had gained weight and he had lost weight. Um, He was down to about 340-ish and I was at about 295. And I think my wedding day is the last time that I was in the 200s because then we took off and went on a great, awesome trip. And when I came home, I think I was like 303. And then I got pregnant with our first child right away. And from then on, I have not been under... 300 pounds. And again, that gets away from you. Um, I We had two kids, n- kind of back to back. They're about 20 months apart. So um, boys, active and very fun. We have a blast with them. But 
I just haven't taken any time for myself. Always in the back of my mind wanting to and joining different weight loss groups and joining different things with people, but never actually following through and finishing anything. So I hovered around, after my second child, I hovered around 330 for a really, really long time. That was kind of my range. And then um, not this not this past winter, but the winter before that, uh, I was on vacation with my family in Florida. And I actually somehow, I don't even know how I did it. Somehow I stepped wrong and I twisted my knee and everything went kaput on me. My knee like completely jarred itself. I, t- I put a tear in my meniscus. Uh, we were all set to go to Disney that day and I still trucked my way through the park anyways. Ugh, that was not a good idea. I ended up, so I had, um, this is crazy. I had jean capris on and my knee got so swelled that day and I took so much Motrin. We ended up taking a pair of scissors and cutting a slit in the back of my capris just so that my leg could breathe a little bit because my pants got so tight from all the swelling. It was crazy. And of course I sat as much as I could, but when you already bought your hundred dollar tickets to go to Disney, it's like, we're going like we're going to go. So, um, that winter was really hard. Even when I got home, I got right on the appointments right away, tried to do a little therapy, uh, tried to do a cortisone shot and then nothing was working. And it was like, well, we got to do a surgery and repair the meniscus. Well, they also discovered that there was some arthritis in there. And I think through the surgery, uh, I think they agitated the arthritis because my knee still hurt bad after the surgery like it just never got it together then I was favoring it and then so my other knee started hurting and I ended up getting cortisone shots in both knees at 36 years old and it's like I know I did I'm not even very good at research I'm never gonna claim to be the smartest person in the world I'm never even gonna tell you that I know it all about anything but I do know that cortisone is not good long term like it is going to break down the joint it is not the answer and I was like oh this is only going to get worse not better and my comedy show started to suffer meaning when you're on stage and you're trying to deliver some material and you can't hold a thought you can't concentrate because your freaking leg hurts so bad and when you step wrong it's 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 like piercing piercing pain that is not good for a comedy show like not at all so <clears throat> that was very frustrating um and i went to my family doctor and i for my yearly checkup and i just remember crying and bawling to her and i was just like when is it my turn like, when is it my turn? Why can't I just fit in? I just want to I just want to walk into a room and just blend in. When is it my turn? I mean, I'm doing comedy shows and I'm standing on stage and there's two, three hundred people in front of me and I'm the biggest person in the room. I know that because I can see the audience. I'm the biggest person. I'm bigger than the girls. I'm bigger than the dudes. I'm bigger than everybody. And she's like, well, maybe it's time for us to look again at the weight loss surgery. There's a lot of options available now. That whole world has changed. And um, my current husband, my amazing husband, has amazing insurance. And his insurance company actually had a lot to offer when it came to exploring the idea of weight loss surgery. So I did, I dove right into it. Um, The whole process, You know, I will tell you when it comes to any type of gastric surgery, when you're involving an insurance company, the process can be a little frustrating. It is not, it is not like a one and done deal or a one phone call or one piece of paper kind of thing. Uh, They want to make sure you're doing the right thing, which rightfully so. The the hospital needs to know you're doing the right thing. There's there's some hoops to jump through, and there is a process. I started the process in May. I went to my first meeting and got signed up with the um, group of doctors that I wanted to work with here in Michigan. And I ended up having um, gastric sleeve surgery October 24th. So May to October, that is how long it took me to get through all the hoops and fill all the requirements 
for gastric sleeve surgery. So for those of you that don't know, there's actually three options out there available. There's the band, the gastric band, which isn't done very much anymore. They've found uh, like a lot of different things with it. Like people that already have a band, they still use the band. They'll get it filled. They'll get it loosened up. Um, how you know the however the band works, but they're not. There isn't a lot of gastro. What is the name of those doctors? Gastroenterologists? I don't know. Anyways, there's not a lot of doctors recommending that anymore. So basically, you're left with the um, gastric bypass, which is the rerouting. Uh, they take your stomach, cut down, make a very small pouch, and then they reroute from the bottom and hook it up to that pouch. Um, or the gastric sleeve, which is actually what I had done. The gastric sleeve, your routing stays completely the same. They just take your stomach and cut off extra and make so where where my esophag where my esophagus goes down it basically goes right into my stomach it's about that size it goes all the way down and then right into my intestines so you go from however what size your stomach is to about uh, 15 ounces of space um, which I can tell you is very limited much more limited than I expected but definitely uh, wouldn't take it back for the world. So when I started the process uh, back in May, uh, my first appointment, I stepped on the scale. And of course, I had been avoiding the scale for a while because my knee had been hurting and I knew I had been sitting around more so than normal. And I didn't want to know. I didn't. I felt my clothes getting tight. I, I bought, I got to be an extra in a movie that was filmed here in Michigan and I was super pumped, but you, it was all about Christmas. It was a Christmas movie. So you had to wear Christmas clothes. And I remember I had to go to the store and buy new pants cause I didn't have any pants and these red pants that I got that I just thought were the coolest thing ever. I ended up buying a size 28. And I had hovered between like a 22 and a 24 for a really long time. So I knew if I was buying a 28, that meant it's getting bad. Like something's happening. So, uh, yeah, I went to my first appointment and um, got on the scale and I was 366 pounds. That was my heaviest weight registered on a scale. And it probably likely could be over 370. I probably ate very little that week knowing I was going to see that doctor. But uh, yeah, 366 pounds was my heaviest weight. And I remember looking at that and I was like, are you sure? Like, is that right? Come on. That's rounding 400 pounds. That's more than halfway to 400 pounds. And for me, it just... I was, I remember being so surprised when I crossed over to 300 and thinking like, wow, I'm a 300 pound person. And now the reality setting in of crossing into the 400s, like you're coming, you're getting there. Like you're, you're, you're there. You're moving right there. Oh my gosh. So that was a big reality check and I was ready to dive in and do what they needed me to do to explore the possibilities of this surgery. And um, October 24th, I had my gastric sleeve operation and I am happy to report that as of this morning, and let's see, it's January, so October, uh, the end of October to Jan the first part of January, it's the first week in January, um, cheers to 2020, uh, I am down 60 pounds. Like, whoa, holy smokes, 305, I weighed in this morning, 305, so I'm really close, I'm knocking on the door of the 200s, and I'm so pumped, I can't wait, and I can't believe, like, it's really gonna happen, I mean, I feel great, there is definitely things to learn, I've ate a certain way for 37 years, and now, you know, you have to change things, you gotta do things differently, and uh, it's all about health. And I am on stage on the weekends doing stand-up comedy. I want to be healthy. I want to live a long life with my husband, with my kids, with my audiences. I, I This isn't like a, um, for me anyways, this isn't all about getting super skinny and super pretty and super perfect so I can just like show off to the world. I, you know, at some point in my life, I'm not going to lie, that probably would have been a thing, but that is just not currently a thing for me. Uh, currently, it's all about getting healthy so that I can 
write better jokes. I can be a better mom. I can provide better material. I can have more stamina in my day. Uh, this YouTube channel is a perfect example. I have a lot of stuff I want to do on here and I want to tell you guys and show you guys, but I get so tired by the afternoon from putting in a day at 300 and some pounds. Like I want to have more stamina. I want to have more vigor inside of me so that I can do more projects and, and do more stuff because we're only alive one time. Like that's it. We're on this earth once, one and done. And once you're done, you're done. And you don't know when that is. I mean, this this could be my last video. Who knows? I mean, you just don't know. I'm asking for that not to happen because um, I got so much cool stuff to show you guys. But yeah, so uh, this is my gastric sleeve journey uh, 2020. I'm going to take you guys through a whole bunch of cool stuff. And I'm really excited to share the process with you and help... For those of you that are thinking about doing it or maybe are starting your process of doing it, I'm excited to take you through more of the details of how to get through the liquid diet and how to get through the time right after surgery and what is new about your new life and how does it feel to be hungry. Are you even hungry? Do we even know what hunger is? I mean, I have had to go through it's psychological testing because I decided... I didn't even know what hunger was. I used to think I would get so hungry that I would shake and like be like, I can't think I'm going to get a headache. I'm going to pass out. And I don't know if any of that was actually even true or if it was just this telling this that was the case because your brain is so powerful. Your mind is insanely powerful and it can tell the body what to do because your mind doesn't know the difference between truth and a lie it doesn't know and my great friend Carmen O'Quinn go follow her she's an amazing fitness guru um, she told me that we actually just got a chance to talk and she's like your brain doesn't have any way to know the difference between a truth and a lie and so whatever your brain is telling your body your body's gonna respond to whether it's the truth or not so you have to make a physical conscious effort to tell yourself what it is you want your body to do. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh, like all these like aha moments. It's just crazy craziness. So anyways, you guys, thank you so much for tuning in and thank you so much for listening to my crazy story. And I can't wait to dive into more details and make sure you check out the other videos. Hit subscribe. I would love to chat with you more. Lots of cool stuff is coming to this channel. I mean, seriously, cool stuff. I'll see you again soon. Bye.